look what I have right here. The mysterious blue box. And what is in the blue box? Yes, that's right. It's the mysterious magic box of pinhole cameras that Joe has made over the decades. And we're gonna look at this pinhole camera today. Well, good day everybody, this is Joe, and we're gonna talk today about a pinhole camera. I haven't done a pinhole camera video in a while, it's well past due. And as you saw from the intro, I have a whole bunch of pinhole cameras that I built over the years that I have stored in that blue storage bin and actually there's a lot more of them that won't fit in there bigger cameras and whatnot but this is a camera that I designed in 2007 and it's a carousel camera and I was going to show you how it works and everything so it's uh, constructed from a base of this was part of a countertop MDF with the laminate countertop material. I had a scrap of it and then I um, built it up with masonite board and some gaffers tape. There are two pinhole shutters, one on the top tier for the carousel, one on the bottom tier. It's four positions uh, on each carousel top and bottom. And then on the lid here you have a rotating handle with four positions. One, two, three, four, and that turns the carousel itself. Okay, so the lid just pulls right off like that. And the underneath side of the lid, there are two machine screws that rotate on a disc operated by the handle. And those machine screws intersect two holes in the rotor of the carousel. And let's pull the rotor out set the camera box aside for a moment. So this carousel is made from galvanized steel. You can buy it in big sheets. You can cut it with a heavy-duty guillotine style paper trimmer or metal shears, which I did. And then the thing about galvanized steel that's so cool is because you can solder it together. So each tier of the carousel is built of two intersecting veins to make four quadrants and they're slotted so they fit into each other. Uh, then I took a wire brush attachment on my drill and I wire brushed the surface of it so it was all rough and then I used a propane torch and some liquid solder flux and some rosin core solder to solder them together and the same thing with these discs, the disc that separates the two halves and the top part. Those were all wire brushed and soldered and then I spray painted it flat black and it makes for a pretty nice little uh, rotor. The bottom part, there's a little round protruding cylindrical piece right here and that intersects with a, uh, a washer that I glued to the bottom inside of the camera and it acts like a bushing. That's what it rotates on. It rotates on that little protrusion. The two holes in the top of the rotor uh, are for what operates the Rotor, rotors motion via the handle and these two machine screws right here. Now the holes that I'm using are approximately a quarter inch in diameter and the machine screws are probably 832 machine screws so there's a little bit of slop or play in that rotor. When you turn it you'll notice a little bit of play on the handle and I did that on purpose because it's a little bit tricky getting the lid back in place to intersect these two uh, holes. I'll show you that in a little bit. But anyways, if you look on the lid here, the four positions are labeled with tape, one, two, three, four, and the rotor is correspondingly labeled, so you can tell what position corresponded to what picture after you've taken them and you go back to your darkroom and unload the paper negatives. When I was first designing and uh, testing out this design, I noted I had fogging from one negative. The light would come through the pinhole and kind of hit up here and, the, and go and hit the edge of the other one. And so I made these paper baffles that are from heavy uh, cardstock and they kind of sit up in here and they just help the uh, these little tabs here help keep the light from fogging the other negative. But this is a curved film plane camera so the negatives are curved inside of each one of these quadrants. 
The film format size on this camera is 4x5 inches, and here's an example of a paper negative. I'll show you some more examples later, but these uh, paper negatives slip right into each camera chamber like that in a curved fashion. And another purpose for having these black paper liners is the little tab on the end enables you to pull out the paper negative in the darkroom very easy so you can remove it without fumbling with it and potentially scratching it or getting fingerprints on it. So after you've loaded the paper negatives in the darkroom into your carousel and they've been pre-flashed, usually I would do it, you have to carefully set the rotor down into the base and then you want to get that little protrusion on the bottom lined up with a hole in that center washer down there and it takes a little bit of fiddling you kind of just want to move it around until there it sets seats in there and you can check it it's, it's seated and then the more challenging part of it is getting the holes in the rotor lined up with the protruding bolts so what I do is I point the carousel like number one toward the front of the camera here and then I'm going to move the lid to number one which is the front of the camera, move the rotor to that same position and then what you want to do is kind of carefully set the lid down and then kind of move it back and forth until the bolts are seated in the holes in the rotor and then I will seal up the camera just to keep the lid from coming off. I usually use a piece of gaffer's tape on either side of this to keep the lid secure when you're out in the field but uh, here you have the carousel now you can turn it with the handle so in operation uh, you're going to have a multiple paper negatives loaded in the camera of course you could also use Harman direct positive paper the intention of this camera design was it's just another way to carry multiple pictures out in the field multiple pieces of paper or film without having to use sheet film holders without having to reload the camera between every shot inside of a changing bag in this particular camera it gives you a total of eight pictures that you can use out in the field before the camera has to be unloaded which would be equivalent to four double-sided sheet film holders if it was a sheet film holder kind of camera but you could of course just put a couple negatives in here or you could just put four of them one of either the top or bottom tier or you could load up the whole thing with eight pictures but the basic way uh, that this camera is used is you set it to your starting position like number one for instance up on the rotor on the indicator and then you're going to have two pinhole shutters to operate one on the top position and one on the bottom position and then you'll go to number two position and then three and four etc like that once you get it back into the dark room you open up the lid pull the rotor out and then you want to take off the negatives in the order that you shot them and put them in some kind of order before processing so you don't get them all mixed up right so uh, I'd like to uh, load the camera with a couple uh, paper negatives and try to find a scene to photograph or perhaps maybe I'll make some kind of a scene, a still life setting. So my very first uh, sketch that I can find was March of 2007 and it relates to the idea of a carousel camera that is automated uh, with a motor that drives the carousel and so I was thinking a little bit too high-tech, but the basic layout of the carousel itself is going to be this drum with four quadrants and a curved film plane. And the film plane, the curvature of the film plane is kind of like this. Four slightly curved with one pinhole aperture. Now you would turn the carousel to each succeeding picture. And then in the March of 2007 again, I'm working more on a manual design here uh, this one this idea is a a square rotor with a flat film plane and uh, it rotates like that and you might need to have some kind of a light baffle between the upper and the lower stage so you can actually do eight pictures four on top and four on the bottom again a square rotor and then I had this idea for a pointer system, kind of like this in the uh, layout. And so I had some notes here about the design of it and whatnot. But that's kind of the basis for the current version of the carousel camera. In my picture archives, I usually don't throw away any of the tests. So I have early shots where I had 
light leaks and fogging and some issues with it. And then we come along to where the pictures start to get a little bit better. This was a one minute exposure and I marked the position as 4T, meaning position 4 on top. It's the side of my house, the corner of my house on the outside. Uh, close up shot. There's a lot of cool pictures in here though. I kind of was looking through here and had forgotten how nice I, some of these are. So this is a window in my house. So what I was doing to keep track of the exposures on this camera is I was taking an old business card and I would divide it into eight quadrants and then I could write the exposure time and something about the uh, the subject matter on each one of the quadrants. I like this pic this tree picture looking upwards from the ground level. I really like that. So I'm going to go get my little scene set up outside and see if we can take a picture here. Okay, so I have a little diorama set up here in the sunny front porch. Um, so this is an old Collier's magazine or book of World War I, The Great War. And it's in terrible shape. I got it from a friend years ago and the pages are all falling apart. But it has this picture of these soldiers marching. Maybe that's President Wilson, I'm not really sure. But anyway, so I have some little figures set up in the foreground and I'm using the top pinhole on the box here. And it's, instead of using a tripod, it's actually too low to the ground for a tripod. I'm using this little stool here. So this is kind of a makeshift little diorama we're gonna take a picture of. I'm gonna do two exposures. I have uh, a negative in position one and position two on the top part of the carousel. So I'll be using the same pinhole for both of them. Okay, the light meter recommends uh, two seconds at f90.8, and that's with reflective metering at ISO 12, which is what my paper negatives are rated at. So I'm using Arista RC grade two semi-matte finish paper negatives on this. So we're gonna calculate what the actual exposure time needs to be. Instead of being f90.8, it's gonna be f240, I believe. 240 divide by 90.8 equals square it times equals and times the two seconds which is a recommended about 14 second exposure so we'll try maybe 15 seconds okay so you always want to have a watch with a sweet second hand and uh, 15 seconds so the top one make sure that carousel is centered and uh, get my watch ready. So keep my shadow out of the shot. Let's see if I can do this. Wait at the top of the hour. All right. Five, 14, and put your finger over the pinhole. Always a good strategy. Okay, let's turn the carousel to position two. Make sure it feels like it's nicely centered there. I'm gonna move the composition slightly back a little further. Okay, so the second exposure is gonna also be 15 seconds. So I'm just gonna expose it the same way and then we'll develop them. So I think I'm gonna tray develop these only because the light was pretty bright and it gives me more control. I can pull the negative early or I can develop it slower if I wanna control the contrast. But I currently have the eight by 10 tray drawer set up so I need to move to the uh, four by fives okay four by five drawer trays are poured up so I intend on doing about two to three minutes in the developer depending on how exposed they were and then 30 seconds in the rinse about a 30 seconds in the stop another 30 second rinse two minutes in the fixer and then the water rinse tongs of course for developer stop bath fixer and some counterweights that will keep these drawers from tipping over when you pull them out like that and i have the camera right here ready to unload the paper and start processing okay so this first image i didn't pre-flash either of these because i had problems with my light source when i wasn't working for some reason anyways so this is the first one in the water rinse and uh let's see here Kind of interesting. This second picture I post flashed uh, in, under the flashing light after it was exposed, but before I developed it. So the shadow details, the, the faint 
tones are much better. And uh, what I did with both of these pictures, though, is I put them in the developer for about 30 to 45 seconds and pulled them out and put them in the, put them in the water bath to just sit there, face up, still. And the idea is the parts of the image that are dark will exhaust the developer because it's not being replenished. But then the shadow details will slowly develop further, and it helps to increase your shadow details without blowing out your highlights. So, okay, I gotta go rinse these, and we'll get them uh, dried, and then we'll take a look at them. And as my usual habit, I try to rinse uh, the prints outside under some tree or whatever, watering the landscaping, so I don't just pour drinking water down the drain. At least I can do it in the summertime. Wintertime, sometimes the hoses are frozen, not connected and all that, but we're gonna let this rinse for maybe 15 minutes. This is RC paper, so it doesn't take too long of a rinse. And in the meantime, while my pictures are rinsing, I get to clean up my mess in here. Well, the results were pretty much what I had expected before. The camera is not the sharpest pinhole camera in my collection. I think the uh, pinhole sizes are a little bit larger than what they could be optimized for. And maybe in the future I'll go and make me a set of uh, smaller size pinholes and sharpen them up a little bit, but not too bad. Obviously the lighting was really harsh. And the other issue is, well, if you look at both images here, uh, first of all, the first one that was shot closer up, I did not pre-flash the image. Uh, I had a problem with my light source when I was trying to get the paper loaded, so I just loaded it in without a pre-flash. And you can tell the shadows are pretty dark. You can't really see much detail on the front of the owl. And the little cowboy guy is pretty much in silhouette. But the curved film plane of this camera reminds me that anytime you have a curved film plane camera you need to get really a lot closer than what I got which presents a problem that sometimes the camera itself or the shadow of the camera interferes with the image and so the best way I've found to alleviate that problem is to have this the light coming from the side and so that the subject matter is side lit and the camera's shadow is being cast off to the side away from the image so you set up your scene and you set up your camera close into the scene have the sun coming in through the side a little bit on the camera side of it to where it will cast on the front side of your subject but not so much that the shadow of the camera gets in the scene so I should have gotten closer in the second shot was even a little further out I pulled the camera back but I did post flash the negative and it did definitely give me it gave me better uh, tones and better shadow detail. Unfortunately, there was a little scratch on the negative, a scratch on the paper right at the base of the uh, the uh, cowboy guy. So, interesting little results, and this is uh, indicative of a lot of the experience I've had also with making your own little diorama scenes, creating your own little world and photographing them with pinhole cameras is a lot of fun because the near ground and the far ground are equally in or out of focus. So you can kind of play with a sense of scale. So the carousel camera was another camera design in a long series of camera designs that I had been working on over the years to solve the problem of how do you go out with a pinhole box camera and be able to take multiple images without having to carry heavy and expensive and bulky film holders. How do you make it self-contained? And this was one of the solutions, a two-tiered uh, carousel camera with eight shots. I did uh, later on in my sketch journal have other ideas I documented for variations on the carousel camera that were sort of like a Rolodex system, except it was horizontal. And you could have a bunch of different pages in the of paper negatives in the Rolodex system, but it was always kind of a narrow angle of view. It wasn't, you couldn't really get a wide angle of view with that kind of a design. And for a small negative size, the camera was really big. So there's kind of a trade-off in some of these designs, but this was definitely a tangent in, in the design of cameras, a little odd way of designing a camera with eight shots. Hope this gave you guys some uh, inspiration to go out and design your own cameras, no matter how crazy of an idea you think it is, go out and do it. Until next time, you guys have yourselves a great day.